Today's show uh, addresses a life issue not really understood by the general public. You may remember a year ago or so, you could not turn on the television or pick up a newspaper without being overwhelmed by the stem cell research controversy. Perhaps you were left with the impression, oh, what's the big deal by these mainstream television and print media outlets? Today's show explains what stem cell research is, why certain uh, types of stem cell research, embryonic versus adult stem cells, uh, is controversial, and who and why are certain researchers pushing for the controversial type of stem cell research, how they employ Hollywood types to push their controversial cause, why embryonic stem cell research is much more costly, riskier, and has a very long time horizon before any possible fruits could be gained. Finally, our guest today explains why embryonic stem cell research is morally objectionable. I confidently believe you'll find today's program to be unique, informative, content-rich, truthful, and thought-provoking. Today's guest has a unique and pertinent background to discuss stem cell research. The Reverend Dr. Thaddeus Paholchik is a Catholic priest of the Diocese of Fall River, Massachusetts. And as an undergraduate, he earned degrees in philosophy, biochemistry, molecular cell biology, and chemistry. Uh, he also did laboratory research on hormonal regulation of the immune response system. He later earned a PhD in neuroscience from Yale University, where he focused on cloning genes of neurotransmitter transporters, which are expressed in the brain. He also worked here in Boston at the Massachusetts General Hospital in collaboration with the Harvard Medical School. From a bioethics perspective, Father Paholchik studied for five years in Rome where he did advanced work on dogmatic theology and bioethics, examining the question of delayed ensoulment of the human embryo. He has also testified before the Massachusetts and the Wisconsin legislatures during deliberations over a bill to ban human cloning. Welcome, Reverend Dr. Tad. Thank you very much for having me, Brendan. Nice it's to pleasure see you. to be here. Oh, it's great to have you. Um, today, I'm uh, going to ask some questions uh, that uh, uh, perhaps uh, what we hope that is very informative for our public and uh, listening audience. Um, could you clearly and concisely explain to our listening audience what STEM search, uh, stem cell research really is? Well, stem cell research involves using very primitive types of cells, cells that have not yet differentiated or you might say decided what it is that they want to become. These are cells that are really blank cells uh, and that's part of the reason that they're so powerful because the idea is that you would take a stem cell and then force it to become a particular type of tissue. It could become lung, it could become stomach, it could become kidney, uh, it could become muscle or nerve. So it's sort of a very potentially powerful approach to regenerative medicine because in a nutshell the idea is that if you have a damaged tissue somewhere in your body that you should be able to utilize stem cells from some source and basically generate a fresh supply of starting tissues and those tissues could then be used to transplant into the body to reconstitute lost functions. I see. And um why is stem cell research controversial? Well, the controversy really swirls around one focal point, and that is the source of these cells. The source is where all the debate takes place, because you basically have two super categories of stem cells. The one is from embryos. The other is from adult type sources, meaning, for example, from bone marrow, from uh, umbilical cords. You can isolate a certain type of neural stem cell from brains, from cadavers, mm -hmm. up to 20 hours after people have died. So yeah. you have these two kind of alternative sources from embryos or from adult sources. And the problem, the controversy swirls around the fact that it is necessary always and without exception 
to destroy a human embryo in order to obtain embryonic type stem cells. That is the current, um, the most uh, advocated source. It is also possible to obtain these cells from aborted fetuses. Uh, and that, of course, raises its own set of difficulties. Uh, but that type of, I think you can see the, the basic controversy swirls around the origins of these cells, that one has to violate the integrity of a human embryo in order to prepare what's called a stem cell line. Uh -huh. And um, who and why are researchers pushing for controversial types of stem cell uh, research? Why are they pushing for the embryonic and not going with the adult stem cell? What, what's, why are they doing that? Well, there's this perception in general that if you utilize embryonic stem cells that they are more flexible, that they offer you uh, a greater possible number of final target tissues that you can make. So scientists, I mean, in, in, in theory, you should be able to generate any of the cell types in our body using embryonic type stem cells because they come from such an early embryo that these are the cells that are destined to give rise to the entire fetus, all the different cell types. So when scientists look at the power of these cells, this ability to make any, it turns out we have 220 different cell types in our body. This ability to make any of the 220 is a very alluring kind of a, uh, an attraction for the scientists. And that's the reason that there's such strong advocacy to use these cells uh, in therapy and to push forward the studies. If you use uh, stem cells from adults, these are typically less flexible. They are already partly differentiated. So for example, the cells that you would get out of the cadavers that I mentioned from mm -hmm. the brain, these cells tend to give rise mostly to neural type cells, cells of the brain, mm -hmm. glia, uh, astrocytes, and so on. So they're already partly committed down a particular differentiation pathway. So the argument is, well, therefore they're less flexible, that must make them less desirable. But in point of fact, that is not a, not a compelling argument in this debate. The reason being that the stem cells that come from adults are already resident in our bodies and very stable in our bodies. They naturally belong there. It's their natural uh, location. Mm -hmm. The ones that come from embryos, if you try to take those and place those into an adult already grown organism, what often happens is you end up with the formation of teratomas. These are a type of cancer uh, that has been more or less plaguing the entire field of embryonic stem cell research. And in that sense, the adult type stem cells represent a far superior type of starting material because we know that they don't present this risk of tumor formation. So mm -hmm. to answer your question in a nutshell, why do scientists, you know, why are they so focused on the embryonic type? Well, in point of fact, they're not all focused on the embryonic type. Many scientists are energetically pursuing studies using adult stem cells as well. And in fact, at the national level, the amount of funding that's dedicated to the adult type is probably about 10 times more than what is dedicated to the embryonic type. However, the embryonic type gets all the press, gets all the notice, uh, and that, as I mentioned before, is largely because of the fact that they appear to be so flexible and powerful that they have a particular magnetism and draw about them mm. for scientists. Yet they're more risky because of uh, the teratoma aspects? Definitely more risky because of that. Uh, and in that sense, when you think of one of these stem cells from an embryo, it's trying to become any of those 220 cell types in our body. They're so energetic in that attempt uh, that they really are not a stable cell type. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's necessary to go through a number of series of steps in order to make them properly differentiate and achieve the requisite stability uh, at the end. So they, they clearly are a more labile, you might say, source of cells 
uh, they have more risks implicit uh, in their development and use in human therapy.